eggs. Yes. Um, don't know about you guys, but these just crack me up. <laughs> Sorry, that was a bad yoke. Oh! Uh, make sure you're in the right scale and then we need to create an egg create a sphere and make sure it's probably the size of an egg maybe what's that like 2.5 convert it chuck a smooth on it a wireframe and give it a shell something pretty thin like that convert it to an editable poly call it an egg and there we go. And we can just hide that. So create a tie flow. And we will birth objects. Choose our egg. Set it to show geometry. Create a little tie flow emitter. Set it up there. Choose the position icon. And we'll set that to this one. And now we'll chuck some speed in. Set it to follow the icon. Then we'll see how fast it's going. Yep. So we'll make it go a bit faster. Maybe four. Uh, variation of about fifty percent. We wanna we wanna spawn more eggs. So what we'll do is we'll add the spawn operator in. Um, in the spawn we'll do per second. And let's just do say what two. Two per second. Now this is gonna go all weird and do things we don't want. So we're going to branch these ones off into this event and the spawn will go into here now. So we'll check, make sure that's display. Now to see our egg spawning. So we can just turn this one off for now. Do a random 3D rotation as they spawned and we'll give them a Fizz X shape. So now when we play it, all the eggs should just fall down on the ground. Bang, bang, bang. Working with such small scale is they tend not to behave the best. So because I'm working in such small scale, um, I'm going to change the time step to probably a quarter of a frame. So now it's just going to work a lot better. Um, when the eggs hit the ground, um, we want them to break up. So I'm just going to add a plane to act like the, act like the ground. What we can do is we could add a collision test, but I'll tell you why I don't use that in a, in a second. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a surface test, and then I'm going to say when it's um, to this ground plane, um, when it's about, say, less than, let's say, when it's less than three centimeters away from it, um, I want it to go into the next event, which will um, fracture it into little um, into Verona fractures. So I'll add the Verona. So when it's three centimeters away from the ground plane, it'll go into here, make sure it's geometry. And now um, we can just set this something higher, like say 75. And now when you play through, that'll just break. And the reason I don't use collision on this is because if you use collision, once, once the egg hits the ground, it then has a frame where it sort of, it's, it, it slows, it doesn't break properly you, you need to almost you need to break them into um, fragments before it hits the ground so that it crumbles the best way um, and the reason I don't break them from the get-go like as soon as I um, spawn them and then I don't break them there because I actually want to keep their transforms as one single point um, until they break up and I'll, I'll get to that in a second as well and then we want to keep all the bits together so we will add a physics bind instead of glue I'm gonna set it to joint and we want to give it all the nice, good settings here. We want the binds to break, but we won't use force for this. We'll use the uh, bend angle at around, say, 15 degrees with a variation of uh, 25%. Some parts are staying together, but we need to increase the binds because there's not much binds. So increase the bind amount to, say, eight binds. So now they're bound together really tightly. Maybe decrease the angle. So let's decrease it to about 10. Oh, cool. So now we're getting some nice, some nice. It's fracturing more like an egg now. But we see, especially with this one, you can see how it sort of it has these breaks all over it, and it doesn't really look the best. So, um, what I'll do is I'll just increase the strength of these springs to say, I don't know. Let's just go somewhere like, let's just go twenty thousand for each one. All right. So it's keeping the eggs together a lot more. 
Um, so now what we want to do is we want to give it a bit more variation. So maybe the variation of the binds to uh, maybe 25%. All right, so I ended up changing it to about bend angle of 8 with a variation of 50%. And I'm pretty happy with the way these eggs are breaking up right now. So And now what we'll do is we'll break them up into even um, smaller parts. We'll do a property test. And we'll look to see if the physics binds have broken. And we'll say if they're equal to, and we know that we've got eight binds in each part, so we'll say equal to eight, but we'll give the variation, let's just halve that. So it'll be four on either side of eight. So um, now what they'll do is when um, a re a amount of number between these binds um, break, we'll send them into the next event, which then we'll break them up even more with another Veronoi. And make sure you give this geometry and we'll just set the uh we'll just leave the default for now and see what happens make sure we give this a different color so we can see what's going on now we've got a little other egg bits breaking now they're probably a little small so i might just go into the settings change it down to say six variation 50 percent all right now it looks I'm pretty happy with that for the way our eggs are breaking up. One thing, another thing to take into account is um, if I just play this back now, um, with how small scale these are, it's um, it, it might end up looking so quick that it's just not appealing. And depending on what you else you've got in your scene, I wouldn't do this, but because we've just got eggs, um, I'll go into the type of settings and I'll actually adjust the time scale. I'll actually bring that down to say 0.75. So you can see now it's just, it's a, it's a little bit more appealing to look at. And we don't have to worry about, you know, making eggs that are gigantically big just to make them look right. We can keep them small. We can keep them at the right scale. We can just adjust the Typhlos um, time scale um, to make things easier. All right, so that's it for um, breaking the eggs. Now we're going to move on to making the yolk effect. So for those who have watched my um, previous tutorial on soft bodies, this is going to be very similar um, to create the yolk. Um, for those who haven't, just um, I'll put a link in the description. This is going to be similar, but it's a different method, which is just a little bit easier to set up than using actors and skin and all that sort of stuff um, if we're just using it for something simple like this. But when the egg breaks into pieces, so when it hits this event, we'll do a spawn operator, and I'll just switch the sides. So when it falls down, we've kept it as one object, so it's only got one transform. Um, so that's why I didn't break it up from the start. When we hit, now it's going to break up into little pieces, but we're actually going to keep the one transform so we can spawn one instance from um, that transform point. Um, so when it goes into this event, we can spawn a shape. So that's a geometry. Now if we set this to, say, something 3D, if I turn off this event, you can see now, see there, so we ignore, ignore this event for now. So if I go back one frame, you can see... Um, this is where the egg goes down, and then as soon as it hits this event, it spawns a shape. So bang, see? See, now we've got a, a shape that spawns inside the one transform. We'll make it a high-res uh, geosphere. Make sure it's geosphere, because you, uh, you want the outside to be um, evenly spaced like this for our soft body to work properly. Um, and then we'll just increase the scale to, say, 250. And we'll get the egg back, and we can see that that's our yolk now. Um, see, our yolk now is sitting inside our egg. We want to be able to um, use this yolk like a soft body. So we're going to um, convert the mesh of that yolk into cloth. If I just display that, disable this, so now we can see that it's now it's turned into a cloth. Um, it's not going to behave very well right now. It's just going to fall and do do nothing. We want to keep this skin, um, this cloth geometry, um, but we want to disable the cloth because um, we want to actually control it with physics the same as we do with soft bodies. So what we'll do is I will create a particle switch which is set to deactivate the bindings and I'll send this cloth into this new event now. All our little um, particles around this cloth are now being sent into this one. So if we do display as geometry, we give this a shape, let's just set it to a cube, scale it down to something like that. So now you can see that we're getting, um, we're going to, like we did with the soft bodies, we've got our particles all around the, uh, the cloth mesh. So now what we can do is we can turn off the shape 
So we only need to add that to actually get the uh, size. We can turn off display geometry, and now we can add a physics shape to all these little particles. Um, set it to sphere, display the hole just so you can see where they are. Oh, I turned shape back on, sorry. Yeah, so now we can see that these are all the, uh, these are all the shapes. We'll add a physics X bind in there, and now it's just gonna probably bounce around. Yeah, so it's boom. Right, let's go back here, we'll set it to join. I might just increase the shape a little bit, so yeah, that's probably better, so something like that. Now we can turn off display hole. All right, and now what we're gonna do is we wanna um, have a look, so we'll set it to join, and we'll enable all these um, extra good settings to make it a bit more accurate. And then we'll go down here to show connections, so now we can see how it's all sort of bound together by these lines. And you can see that not all, that there's a few gaps um, in between the lines, but we want them all to link up to each other. So we'll just increase the max binds to say from three to six. And now you can see that they're connected a lot better. So now we can um, disable that and then simulate it, keep simulating through. And you can see now it sort of squashes flat. It's more like a yoke, but we're still we're not there yet. We'll just increase. We'll just play with these settings for a bit. So just tweak the the spring and damping for each of these until you're happy with a, um, a, a sort of an effect that looks more like a yoke to you. So I usually um, increase it quite a bit. So maybe twenty thousand, and I'll do that on each of these. Now increase the damping a bit. Right, so I just went even higher, so I went to like 50,000 each, and the damping is about uh, 1,000. So now it's looking more like an egg yolk. So you can see um, as we go down, splat comes up and it sort of comes to rest. Little eggs breaking, and the yolk is coming out. It's not the perfect solution, but you know, it does the job. So basically, if you want eggs breaking with yolk coming out, um, you know, this. We're done. See you, bye. Thanks. Uh, sorry, I've gone crazy. Uh, so next step is to make the fluid come out. Just drag out a, um, a fluid box. We've got our Phoenix fluid box covering the, the egg area. We'll just set this to jam on the floor. And now we will add a fluid source. And if we go over here to emit nodes, you'll notice that we haven't got anything. So it's like, where, what are we actually going to emit the fluid from? So we've got our tire flow system, but we need to, we need to emit, um, fluid from every egg when it breaks. So, you know, you can either go in manually and add all these things and, you know, add a different fluid source for every single object where it is and, you know, keyframe it on and off and do that, et cetera, et cetera. But it's, it might become, you know, a pain in the ass, especially if you've got like, say, what well, we've got like a handful of eggs here. But what if you had a simulation where you had like a hundred eggs or something, or basically something that we need to automate? Uh, if we go over to this, the emit settings, you can see instead of the surface force, we can change that to um, volume inject. And now what that's going to do is it's going to, it's going to, um, when you've got a shape, it's going to fill that shape with fluid, and then it's also going to emit fluid from that shape. That's what we want, but we need to actually set a shape that we want to emit from. So if I go back into tie flow, so similar to what I did with creating a yolk, I'm going to do another one. So I'm going to spawn something else, um, but this time um, we're just going to spawn a shape that will um, that will be our fluid emitter. So we'll go to shape and we'll spawn this into here. And now say we'll go down to where our, our uh, particle is ground. We'll turn off this one so we can't see it for now. And you see we can't see our shape, so if I display it as geometry, now we can see our shape. So we're going to change that to something that's going to be a good emitter object. So if we change it into something, um, you can use a sphere, but it's pretty uniform. Maybe like a uh, uh, like a stone or something. So a stone, you can see it's, it's pretty non-uniform and, it, you know, particles are going to emit from around this whole shape. So if we just increase the scale of that, say 250, we've got a, a little shape we're going to use to emit from, but you can see it's interfering with our yoke. So for this part of the simulation, we're just going to disable the yoke part of it um, because we only need 
we're going to we're going to export these forward berths separately. What we can do now is if we play it, if we go forward a bit, you can see that it's still it's doing the whole reacting with the egg bind like we had before. So we just want to break those. So we'll go to the physics break and we'll just break those binds that the uh, rock had. And now what's going to happen is it's going to just react like the same old physics shape. Um, like the yolk did, but in this sense, it's just a, a simple stone shape. We want it to emit, say, over two frames. So maybe like here is when it starts to emit inside the egg, and then the next frame is when it stops emitting. We will add a time test, and the time test will say if the event age is equal to two, and we'll just decrease the variation down to zero. Now, if the time test, so if it's equal, if it's been alive for two frames, we'll move it into this delete event. So now we can just move delete that. So now this stone is only going to live for two frames. So if I scroll back, you see it births now. One frame forward, it's still alive. Next frame, it's dead. Now you'll see all our little stones. Um, our stones will spawn where our eggs are. See for a couple of frames. So now we can export all these um, little stones as our um, liquid emitters. So if we just create a new, just create a new layer and call it fluid birth objects, do an export particles in our fluid birth objects, and we'll just export these as objects. Checking all these things are the same. We'll just call it fluid birth. Um, export to the active layer we just made. And one thing we want to make sure we untick is this scale to zero. And we, we don't want them to, when they're, when they're deleted or pre-born, we don't want them to scale to zero. We, we want them to show up all the time. And I'll show you why. So if we scale, untick that. Now if we export those. So we've exported five particles. So once we've exported them, it's very important to turn off this event now. So we don't need to send these into here anymore. So that, all we needed this for was to birth the um, fluid thing. So now we can turn the uh, the egg yolk back on if we want. So now you can see in our scene we've got these five little stones. And as I play through, you'll see they move. And we're going to use these um, to birth fluid. So what we'll do is we will select all these little stones and we'll just make a quick selection set. So just call it whatever you want. I was called quick. Um, now, in, go into your fluid source, go add, uh, press H on your keyboard, go up to selection sets, and then pick your um, quick selection that you just made, and do pick. So now, it's going to add them to the inject, injector, um, it's going to add them to the fluid source, but it's a um, inje volume inject type, which means it needs to be non-solid. So we just click make non-solid, quickly um, birth some particles. And I haven't got any very far because it's just, it's terrible already. We'll go into our fluid source and we can say, so our inject power is pretty high already. So we'll just take that right down to say, let's just call it, say five for now. And then we will, uh, and then we'll give it another and we'll test it. So basically I just, I, I keep testing as I go and I change, I change one thing at a time so I, so I know exactly what's happening. So I can see now we need to um, reduce it even more. So I'll take it down to say two. All right, so that's a lot better. Maybe I want to change the viscosity. So I'll enable viscosity, and let's just um, raise that up to say 0 0.5. All right, and viscosity is not going to work unless we go unless we go into the grid. And we have to go down to output and make sure we tick viscosity. One thing we want to do as well is you know how we slowed down the tire flow time to be to um, to look a lot better with the small scale eggs. Well, we're going to do the same thing in um, Phoenix. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to time scale, and we're actually going to lower that the same as we did. Um, so 0.75, just like we did with um, the egg shape. And we're actually going to we'll increase this to, say, three steps per frame, um, just so it's a bit more accurate. And also, if we go back to liquid, and now we can start to... Um, <clears throat> and now we're, we're, we've narrowed it down a little bit more um, so we've got our fluid birthing, but one thing, but obviously we're birthing fluid from all of these objects at the same time. Um, and we just want them to birth 
when the egg hits the ground. So that's the reason why before, um, that's the reason why I wanted all these shapes to have two frames, um, just where they're emitting because when, because while they're, we want them to emit particles, what they're doing is in those two frames, they're actually moving. So we can tell Phoenix to say when these shape, these shapes always emit, but only when they move will they be dense. So basically when they don't move, when they're static, they're going to emit no fluid. And then when they start moving, they're going to emit fluid. So we can go, if we go into our um, settings for the fluid source, we can see this modifiers tab. So if we just add one of those, you see now, actually I should put this back on the main layer. So now we've got a little mod for our Freenex source. So we can change this to say, to do something on speed. So if we do speed, and then now it's going to say when these, um, so if I expand this grid up now, it's going to say when the speed is zero, zero um, fluid emits. And then up obviously um, up here when the speed is 300, um, one of the fluid emits. And what one means is that's, that's basically 100% um, of our... Um, injection. So see, we've got our inject power, which is two. So when we go into our grid settings, um, this is going to be 100% of two. So if I drag this back to say something like this, so like say 50. So when our speed, um, when our speed is um, at 50, it's going to do 100% of our injection force. And when our speed is here, which is say 25, it's going to be 50% of our injection force. So What's our first shape that moves? I think it's this one. So I'm just going to remove all those and we'll just isolate this one for now. So now what should happen is when I play the um, Phoenix um, fluid sim, it should go through and nothing should emit until this little particle moves. Yeah. So now see how it moved and then the um, particles emitted. But, and now it's stopped moving, so the particles have stopped emitting. And another good thing, another reason why I wanted this to work as well is because during this movement, we've got a, um, we've got a direction for the fluid to move in. Um, so now we can go back to our fluid source and we can actually um, do this mo tick motion velocity and we can say use, say, 50% of the motion of our source. So now, and we'll set it to start at frame 25. So now if I play it, you can see that it's slammed, the fluid has slammed into the floor because it was moving down. We can just change this a bit. So maybe I'll change that down to say 2.5. And now we can just sort of adjust some settings. So I might um, add some noise to it. So the splatter looks a bit better. Um, that's about all, all we need really for the emission side of things. So now all we have to do is go back into the grid. So one thing I will... I will say is that um, if you work, if the resolution is too low, um, it's hard to get a grasp of what's actually happening probably because as soon as you increase it, it actually changes, it, it changes the way the viscosity on that sort of works. So try and work at a high, the highest resolution you can, um, you know, without, you know, obviously it's going to take a while, but um, you don't want to work in too low resolution while you're trying to fix all these settings because um, you have to change it again up afterwards anyway. Um, so let's just change this up to say 1.2. Uh, so 20, we'll just work with 20 million particles uh, while we're working it out. And uh, so we'll see what this looks like now. So you can see that looks like a nice little sort of egg splat going on. Because the, um, the egg fluid is actually uh, like the egg white, it's actually quite sticky. So we'll enable the sticky liquid. So we, to do that, we have to enable wetting. And now we'll just make it say 0.5, so that's 50%. So we'll make it about 50% sticky. Now we'll see what that's got on there. All right, so maybe there's a little bit too much coming out. So maybe for the liquid, um, the inject power, maybe just put that down to say one. Maybe it's a bit too, it's a bit too viscous. So maybe change the viscosity down to. 0.35. Right, so I turn the particle preview off and enable the liquid. You can see now, so we've got our like, we've got our fluid now. It's it's more eggy, but it's quite um, 
obviously it's quite a, it's still quite viscous. So um, one thing that's going to clear that up is when we increase our resolution. So you can see now it's look it's um looked a lot it's looking a lot better. So now what we can do is we can go through and we can enable all our other fluid objects. Um, but one thing I'll do is I'll select them all, and then you need you need to have them active in your scene for the fi uh, for the fluid to simulate. So we need to keep them there, but they're a bit annoying. So I'll just go into object properties and I'll just um, set them to display as box and just untick renderable for now. Uh, and now it's just a little bit easier to work without having to see those little pebbles in the way. Um, but we know they're going to work with the eggs now, so it's going to look like this. Now what we want to do is we obviously we want, want them to work with tie flow. So if we go back and enable tie flow again, uh, for the fluid to interact with tie flow, we actually have to set mesh operators in here. So what we'll do, uh, so go to mesh and just add that in here, uh, untick render only, and do that for these little fragments as well. We can turn off display. Make sure we've got one up here as well and turn off display because we don't need geometry for that anymore. So now it's all going to be, um, it's actually going to be um, generating mesh in the viewport that Phoenix can react with. So I'll just do a little quick simulation. You can see the egg comes down, cracks, and then the egg white comes out. Um, and sort of sticks to the egg a little bit, which is great. And you can see here it's covering up the egg. The egg yolk is under here, but it's actually covering it up, which is good because um, that's actually what we want. We want the egg. We want it to cover up the egg um, so that it looks a lot more realistic, I guess. Um, so now this obviously you can tweak the settings of the fluid um, as much as you want to try and get it more realistic. Um, this is just for demonstration purposes. All right, so now. We're on to the next step, which basically, you know, if you're happy with the way everything works now, it's fine. You've got your egg cracking, you've got your goat coming out, and you've got your Phoenix FD fluid to simulate the egg white. But um, the fluid isn't going to move the uh, isn't going to affect the the um, tie flow simulation. So that once the eggs crack, they're just going to fall, and the fluid's going to react um, around the cracks. But the crack, the fluid isn't going to push the the, um, the shell at all. So um, if we open up Tie Flow, oh jeez, my dogs are going crazy. So Tie Flow, uh, it's his name Tyson. He's just added this physics fluid thing, which is really cool. Oh god, what are those dogs doing? Shut up, dogs! You bloody dogs! Oh, oh dogs! Who needs them? I do. I need my dog. Uh, so if we chuck this into our, fl into our, I didn't name this one. Yeah, because I'm stupid. Oh, I'll just keep it event three. So that's when our things break up, right? That's when it first goes to this. So that's what we want to move. So we'll chuck our physics fluid into this. So we'll just copy the name and we'll paste that into here. And um, she might go back to start so it doesn't shoot itself. And then just click auto setup. And it tells you what the auto auto things it needs to set up. Um, I won't go too much into it. There's I think there's a couple of tutorials online already about how this um, physics fluid thing works. But just in a nutshell, or an eggshell, <laughs> it basically just enables everything you need. So this um, little bit of code here um, adds that, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, adds the pressure if you want to use pressure. Adds velocity. Obviously, we need velocity, so just click yes. Um, one thing I noticed though is when you enable pressure, um, if you go down into your thing, um, it enables this injector, which fills the grid with smoke, which um, is to do with pressure. But if you're not using pressure, you can just turn it off so you don't have the, the smoke in the way. So I just turn it off next. I don't use the pressure at the moment. Um, but in future, obviously, leave that on. It's going to react with our um, mesh, which needs to be mesh. It needs to be not render only, by the way. So now the Phoenix FD particle is going to react and push our um, little broken shells. And just leave density at one. Basically, it, it multiplies it. So however fast these um, the Phoenix particle grid's moving, it's going to multiply it by these numbers. So let's just say 0.5. So it moves it by 0.5. Um, pressure, I, I remember I turned that off, so I don't worry about that for now. And buoyancy is our actually um, raise that up a bit to say, let's say raise it up to 
Let's raise it up to 10. So now that we've got that, we can just copy this event and we can put that into our small shells as well. Let's put that down here somewhere. And it's exactly the same. You want to make sure if you just play through tie flow, it's not going to do anything. You have to you have to simulate physic. Uh, you have to simulate Phoenix at the same time as you're simulating tie flow. So I'll give that a quick test and see what happens. All right, you see one thing. So I'll just scrub through. So what's done is it, it's hit the ground. The Phoenix particles have come out, and now the Phoenix um, particles are pushing the eggshell so much it's actually pushing it up in the air. So it's actually our shell pieces themselves. So the shell pieces are too light. So we'll just chuck in a little um, little operator, um, chuck in a little mass operator, and we'll just increase the mass to 10. And then I'll just copy that, and I'll paste that in here as well, into the little the little shells. Now we'll just quickly see what that does, hey? All right, so it's not, it's not pushing the um, the shell up anymore, um, but it might be a bit too heavy. So you need to adjust this. So maybe set it to, I don't know, just, just basically this is just where you play around for a lot until you just basically keep reducing the settings until it does what you want, and that's it. So we actually want a bit more. So back in settings, I'm going to actually go to two. All right, so now we can see that the fluid is pushing the eggshells around a bit, which is great. That's what we want. Um, one thing to note, though, if um, if the buoyancy is set too high, then they're just going to bounce on top of the fizz. See here that's probably going to end up just bouncing on top of the fluid. So you want to get a middle ground of how heavy the shell pieces are, and also um, with the PhysX fluid, the buoyancy. So maybe you even reduce the buoyancy now to say five, now that we've, um, we've made our mass about two. So yeah, I changed it while I'm on frame bloody 36. So now I'm going to wait for friggin', friggin' C. The uh, errors. All right, uh, move it back. Don't do that again. Yeah, so there you go. Don't do that. Make sure on frame zero before you change big stupid settings like that. Um, yeah, so change that down to say five and yeah. Um, all right, so yeah, so that's pretty much it for um, making the eggs do their thing. So the last thing I guess I should talk about, um, I'm going to settings with tie flow. And I want to export all these objects. So what I can do is the easiest way to do it is to just go um, chuck an export node just here and export it to anything you want, and it's going to export the whole thing um, done, right? Um, however, it's not going to export the yoke because the yoke is using cloth mesh, which doesn't export the way normal objects do. You, you can export it as a tie cache, and that's going to be fine. So if that's the way you want to do it, that's fine. But I um I want to use motion blur. So obviously um Corona can't render tight cache with motion blur. So I have to export something else. So make a new layer, export all these objects as objects in their own layer, and then I can just render them out with motion blur, no worries. But obviously it's not going to work with the yoke. Say I want to export this yoke as an Alembic format. Let's do an example. All right. So what I'll do is instead of using this one, I'm just going to I'm going to pull this one into um, the yoke that we've got, and I'm going to go Alembic Mesh, and then I'm going to keep all these settings the same. Make sure that um, Cloth Geo is tick because that's the actual one we want. That's the one that we actually care about. And now I'll click Z is up because it's max, and save. And now I will, I'll just do 35. I don't need 35 frames. So I'll just go Generate Alembic. All right, export complete. So now, if I, I'll turn off tie flow, and I will go import, and I'll choose the Alembic. Now, we've got the Alembic in the scene. So you can see that's where it, it, it starts. So now we've got the mesh. But you can see these little, see these little um, squares? Uh, that's because it's not just the cloth geo, it's actually those little squares that are generated as well. So 
Because what happens if, if I actually zoom in now, you can't see them, but they're actually still there. So if I had to go display geometry, you can see that they're actually still there. That's why they're getting exported. And for some reason, if, if you go into, um, say, geometry settings, uh, not geometry, sorry, if you go to general and you untick particles, they still export. So there's no way to export them without that. Um, but there is one workaround you can do. Um, the way I found out how to do it is basically um, because the the cloth mesh the cloth <laughs> I can talk um, the cloth mesh seems to export no matter what. Um, so what we can do is we can send these shapes into a group that we can choose not to export. So if we just add a um, say a particle groups node um, at the start. I'll put that to start, yeah. So and then um and then we set that to export. Just pick a group, maybe just the end here. So say P. Mm -hmm. Um, and now in our export group, we can go down here to the particles to export. We can actually say um we can choose export groups. We can choose P, but now we can go not equal. So everything that's not in group P will get exported. So because we have put all these shapes into group P. P is not going to get exported now. So if I go down to um, set this to say Alembic two, now if I if I make this make this now, I'll bring that in again. Now let's go forward. Bang! So now you can see that it's exported fine now. Uh, if I give this a quick render, you notice see how it's um it looks like it's mirrors. Oh. Oh, why can't I talk today? See how it's normals look inverted? Um, easiest way to change that is just on the actual Olympic, uh, Olympic object, just go down and add a... Where the bloody hell? Add a normal and make sure that flip normals is ticked. It does all this weird shit now. Um, and that just means that it looks like all these vertices aren't bundled together. So thank you, Ty Flow. We can add a tie weld modifier and that will weld them together. And then now we can add a smooth tick auto smooth and bang. Now you've got a nice um, Alembic mesh that we can render and it looks nice. So that's the way, that's how I got around exporting the yoke anyway, or exporting the, um, the mesh. The cloth mesh. Um, one thing that will happen though is, you see if I scroll back, it's only going to be introduced, say now, so bang, and it, all these frames, it's, it's nowhere. So that what that means is motion blur is going to shit itself. So the way around that is I just rendered every single frame with motion blur except for these intro frames. Then I turned off motion blur and then um, rendered all these um, frames where the um, Alembic got introduced. And that obviously there's one frame in there that doesn't have motion blur, but... But anyway, um, that's how you can do some eggs cracking. I'm sure you would probably come up with some, you know, uh, if I had to spend a lot more time on it, I can make it look a lot better. But I just, for tutorial purposes, um, I think it works pretty well. So, um, yeah, cheers. Uh, thanks for watching.